Okay, I think that I am live again in my Let's Talk Laundry group. And I'm so okay, sorry. I think that I am live again in my Let's Talk Laundry group. And I'm so okay, sorry. I think that I am live again in my Let's Talk Laundry group. And I'm so okay, sorry. I think that I am live on. Well. Let's try this again. I don't know if I'm live or not, but I'm going to go ahead and record this bonus part of my laundry class. So this is laundry and scripture. And um, I was um, doing a, a ladies Bible study for our church and came across this information last year. And so I thought, well, this is just too good to not add it to my laundry class. So uh, I'm hoping that we are recording this and I'm hoping it's going live, but if it's not, I will, um, I'll post it uh, after I finish. So let me share my screen correctly. And this is the laundry and scripture. Here we go. So guys, did you know that laundry was in the Bible? Well, it is for real. So as I said, I was teaching about King Hezekiah for our ladies Bible study last year. And I came across this information and I just knew that I had to save it for our laundry class. So check this out. Second Kings 18, 17 says the king of Assyria sent his supreme commander, his chief officer, and his field commander with a large army from Lachish to King Hezekiah in Jerusalem. They came up to Jerusalem and stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to Washerman's Field. So Washerman's Field is also transcribed as Field where cloth is washed, field where cloth is bleached, or fuller's field. It's also known as washer's field or washerman's field, launderer's field. Here where the fullers pursued their occupation is another translation. And the last one is on the road to the laundry commons is also known where that is. So the kings passed by the laundromat. <laughs> Fuller's Field. So this is a picture from, Ku, Ku, I can't even say it, Kuman in the 1970s. Um, and he is demonstrating how clothing was laundered at Qumran, where the autumns were washed, patted down on a dry, flat stone, as it was done in rural France during his childhood. But this is also how it would have been done in biblical times. And whether it was in Qumran in the first century or the city of David in the Iron Age, an area with a smooth limestone floor was utilized for the fulling or the whitening of clothes. So um, again, why is it called Fuller's Field and what is a fuller? The word full is from the Anglo-Saxon fullian, meaning to whiten. To full is to press or scour cloth in a mill. This art is one of great antiquity. Mention is made of Fuller's Soap in Malachi 3.2 and of the Fuller's Field in the scripture I just read, 2 Kings 18.17. At his transfiguration, our Lord's raiment is said to have been white so as no fuller on earth could whiten them and that was found in mark 9 3 and then strong's concordance defines a fuller as kabak k-a-b-a-c which means to trample hence to wash by stamping with the feet and it defines a field as to spread out or lay flat so again this picture is they were laying them flat on the stone, which is called fulling. 
Now there's a location called the Field of Fullers in the city of David in Old Jerusalem. And this picture is taken from a complex of rooms near the Gihong Spring, the oldest section of the city, uh, which dates back to the fourth millennium BCE. And they believe that the lines carved here in the floor were to hold upright vertical looms, but the actual real use is unknown. They're just guessing that. Uh, the complex of rooms is located underground just behind the building at the center of this, this photo here at the top. So the Gihong Spring is at the bottom left, while the st stepped stone structure can be seen uh, uh, underneath it. Excuse me, this, let me back up. So <laughs> the building where this is located is the top picture and the bottom picture is this, the step stone structure that they found where they think the looms and the washroom were. A little more historical context of the Fullers. So Fullers, the patriarch of the Jewish nation before he established himself in Canaan, which is now Israel, is Abraham. And he grew up in Acadia, which was the most advanced civilization of its time. Mesopotamian statues and iconography from Akkadian depict woolen textiles of diverse weaves, some richly patterned and others with looped figure fringes. The cleansing and the coloring of these textiles was sophisticated and it was a secret art. The Jews became privy to those secrets and that knowledge was one of the main stains, main stays of the textile industry as it was practiced by the Jews in the diaspora dur during the, into the modern age. So here's a map of Acadia where Abraham was from and also a picture of one of the statues that can kind of show some of the textures and the um, nuances of some of their clothing. And I got this information from a website called biblicalarchaeologytruth.com. And if you look up Fuller's on that, you can find that information there. This, um, these pictures here, this is a place called Enrogel or in, in Rogel, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, near Jerusalem. In Rogel means literally foot mountain, and it has been interpreted as the Fuller's Fountain because the Fuller's trod the cloth under their feet. In Rogel is an ancient spring. It was at this spring that Jonathan and Ahimez, A-H-I-M-A-A-Z, lay hidden after the flight of David, in 2 Samuel 17, 17. And it was also here that Adonijah held the feast when he aspired to steal the throne of his father, King David, in 1 Kings 1, 9. Others identify it with perhaps some probability with the Bur Eib to the south of the Pool of Siloam and below the junction of the valleys of Kidron and Hinnom. The Bur Eib or Jacob's well, no, excuse me, me, Joab's well, is a singular work of ancient enterprise. The shaft sunk through the solid rock in the bed of the Kidron is 125 feet deep. The water is pure and entirely sweet, quite different from the water of Siloam, which proves that there is, is no connection between them. And that's found from ChristianAnswers.net. When you look up in Rogel, and that is E-N hyphen R-O-G-E-L. Oops, went the wrong way. So what soap did they use? Well, they used Fuller's soap. Um, in Hebrew, it is known as Boreth, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's right here, Mecca Bisham, or it's also interpreted as alkali of those treading cloth. Sometimes it is called niter, N-I-T-R-E, and niter is found um, in Syria and vegetable alkali and was obtained from the ashes of certain plants. And this information came from ChristianAnswers.net under when you Google fuller soap. And another source of information calls it Borith, B-O-R-I-T-H. And they get that um, uh, 
from the same scriptures as the Boreth Mechabisham I just said above. So the scriptures uh, that these reference are Proverbs 25.20, Jeremiah 2.22, Malachi 3.2, where it's also called Niter. And then um, uh, also Malachi 3.2 says, but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. So when he comes, he's going to cleanse us with fuller's soap. That makes me think of the song Refiner's Fire. And the words uh, to this song, I want you to notice I have it here and I'm going to play it. And I'd like you to follow along the words. So as Christians, oops, let me move my stuff out of the way here so I can read what I need to read. As Christians, it's not uncommon for us to have heard that Bible verse that I read uh, from Malachi 3.2, which said, but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. We often touch strongly on the refiner's fire and how, like gold and silver, the Christian life is tried and tested in the hardest moments, which is the fire. And that's where our faith is purified and we come out stronger. However, let's explore the fuller's soap a little bit more. So properly a vegetable alkali obtained from ashes of certain plants, vegetable alkali, um, particularly the salsola kali or saltwort, which abounds on the shores of the Dead Sea and the, in the Mediterranean. It does not appear that the Hebrews were acquainted with what is now called quote unquote soap, which is a compound of alkaline carbonates and oleogenous, oleogenous matter, <laughs> buttery stuff. <laughs> But the word purely in Isaiah 125 says uh, in the revised King James Version, thoroughly or um, as with lie is literally as with bore. And this word means clearness. And hence also it makes it clear or pure alkali. So the ancients made use of alkali mingled with oil instead of soap. And that's found in Job 930 and also in smelting metals to make them melt and flow more readily and purely. Um, and that can be found uh, by Heinrich uh, Gainesis from ChristianAnswers.net dictionary under the word soap. So anyway, did you notice that it's made from plants. So fuller soap is made from plants and plants mixed with oil. They knew what they were doing, didn't they? So our thieves laundry detergent is plants mixed with oil. One more way we can see that synthetic chemicals are not necessary to get the job done. These guys, and yes, most likely the fullers were men, not women, were bleaching with plants to prepare the cloth for weaving and sewing into garments in a secret art form passed down from Abraham so that it so coveted that it sustained the Israelites with a trade income during the diaspora while they were in exile. I love that. Isn't that cool? I had never realized that before, that laundry gave them a trade that sustained them through the diaspora. I wanna look at this picture of the, this slide again, if I can get it to go backwards.
oh, come on. This picture right here is the one I wanna see. This top picture right here um, is a picture that was taken out of a um, Bible dictionary, um, illustrated dictionary. And it was one of the ways they thought that um, the fullers may have whitened and brightened the clothes with the fullers soap. So I just thought that was very interesting. So how does all of this relate to us today? That is, that is the next question. So the fire represents our faith being increased with trials. And I think the soap represents our sins being washed away and making us white as snow. Isaiah 118 says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will be as wool. And Psalm 51, seven says, purge me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Why is it important to be washed and cleaned? Well, first John one, five through 10 says, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So if we are lying, we say that we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that, he has no, that his word has no place in our hearts. And then Romans 12, one says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. The goal is for us to be purified so that we are acceptable, even though the fulfilling process or the fulling process, even though the fulling process can be difficult and sometimes harsh, the time of purification prepares us to be living sacrifices. What does a living sacrifice look like in a practical sense? Well, the following verse, which is Romans 12, 2, helps us understand that. We are a living sacrifice for God by not being conformed to this world. So Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And then John 3, 16 and 17 says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish and have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. You may be going through a very tough moment right now, but remember the fuller's soap and keep in mind how harsh the process is, but also remember the end result. Not only will you be cleansed, but you will also become stronger. So thank you again for coming and thank you for hanging out with me and doing this little Bible study. And I hope you learned some new laundry methods in our first recording. And thanks for hanging out um, during the second recording. I still have three samples of my diluted thieves laundry soap out of five samples that I had set aside uh, for this class. So if you want a sample, let me know. And I still have three door prizes left to give away. So I'll do a drawing um, in the next couple days and give a, everybody a chance to watch the replays of these. So leave me a comment or a question and let me know if you watched it. And thanks for joining me. Bye.